Hey guys, and welcome back to what we should not include. It plays Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are in the Rock for the Brains, a bunch of asteroids out in the wilds of space. And last time, we managed to break our way through to the absolute surface up here. This is something that we've been trying to do for nearly a thousand cycles. And this little machine down here that has been turning lava into steam and rocks. Oh, look at that. It did it just as I said. And rocks, which we have been feeding to our hatches and slowly draining the way down. That we've been actually able to move our way up through around all the deadly deadly magma and make our way up to the surface we've not got a bit of an exploration up here because it's a bit of a climb isn't it but all of this was done in aid of waiting yes indeed waiting for this volcano here to rise in pressure and erupt in about 0.8 cycles at the beginning of last episode it was 10 cycles so we think we did pretty well right there but those 0.8 cycles 0.7 cycles now are a little bit of time to wait so we're going to go over to Blagolia this is our third asteroid that we've been taking over and this asteroid is full of a lot of different geysers and various uh, resource producers that I would really like to take advantage of. But the one that I really, really need to take advantage of, you can see that we've got this natural gas geyser right here. It is dormant. I don't know when it's going to not be dormant because we don't have a researcher over here. But I tell you what I am going to do. I tell you what I am going to do. We're going to have to send Curie over. Uh, th this is something that I th had a feeling we were going to have to do anyway because w we don't have people that can take away things like the abyssalite and like the granite. <laughs> And also, we're running out of food over here uh, on reverse limb because this place is not set up for four duplicates, it's set up for three duplicates. So we've been slowly, a little bit over time, eating more and more of our food as our specialist digger has been over here. So we're going we're gonna to come over, we're going to go to the teleport transmitter, we're going to go, Curie, could you please go back to your original hovel first? This is going to send Curie over to Pyaxlin. The teleporters, unfortunately, only go between these two, reverse limb and Pyaxlin, not Curie, the teleporter, please. So as we watch her disappear through the ether, I, 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 did we rip her apart? Have we just transmitted her, her body as data and then put it together through different parts? Or is it the same part? I don't know. These are questions that need to be solved at some point. But to get over to Blagolia, there is only one way. Indeed, there is only one way. And this involves using a rocket. We don't have one here. I'm hoping that we've got one fully stocked and ready to go over this side. You can see the cargo canister full of oxygen, which is what we want. Look at that. Oh, brilliant. And what about this one? Also full of oxygen. That's... That's really good. We could send whichever one we want. I think I'm going to send this one if there's got a nice interior. It does have a nice interior. It is full of polluted oxygen, though. Polluted oxygen is oxygen. I'm going to I'm going to go with it. Let's have a look on Pyaxin. Let's see what food we've got available to us in large amounts. Gristle berries are what we're going to use. Let's view the view. View the interior? I can't speak. View the interior over here. And we're going to want to get some gristle berry. Yeah, that's the, that's the one that gets um, fried up. So that, that has been grilled, in fact. That's what has happened to there. Uh, if we come over here, we're making bristle berries at the top here. Then uh, our friend Maxwell puts them through the grill. They become gristle berries. We end up with hundreds of thousands of calories of it. And now we're going to be putting it all inside this spacefarer module so that Curie can... can can travel over. Why does this not want to work? Body temperature. Well, how hot is it in here? It's warm. It's warm. It's only 30 degrees. I think we'll be fine. I think this will be fine. I wonder. I wonder. So on Blagolia, we've got two, uh, three, three people living here. And most of them have a lot more morale than they actually are ne uh, needing. I'm looking at the hard digging up here. In fact, we only need to be able to go to number three to get obsidian mining to be able to dig in there. Do, 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 do I go for it? Do we just make... Uh, you know what? We don't We don't need Curie over here. I mean, it'd be nice if we could send her as well. But let's come down to the list. Swan Levitt, could you... Um, Build and dig. Yeah, that, that'd be nice. Farming is more important, but building and digging, yeah, that's very important. I think this might actually mean that I turn off this food filter for a moment. Let's let's just see how this goes. Let's see let's see how Swan Levitt does during the tomorrow. Uh, at some point around here during the cycle, we're gonna have to go back and have a look at our minor volcano over on Reve no not Reverslin, Pyaxlin. Uh, Reverslin does have a minor volcano, but it's not the one we're at. Point three cycles are left to go. I don't know how long point three cycles is. There's the third of this. Uh, that's that's going to be awkward. Here, here's the minor volcano on reverse. Then it's also about ready to go in about 66 cycles. But all this does is throw its magma down here, uh, turn the heat from the magma into steam and everything cools down. It's, it's a nice power system. That's all it's being used for. 
Okay, first port of call for Swan Levitt. Of course, learn those skills from the mini pod. Uh, you can actually just assign the skills even if there's not a mini pod around, and she'll know what she's doing, so that's fine. Let's have a look at the blueprints. We've got anything here that we. Oh, I'll take the copper. Thank you very much. Even though we've got a doctoring rocketry and a bunch of other stuff ready to go, that rocketry 10 is the one that seems a little bit nice. But a small bladder in a rocket pilot, I'm not sure that's the best idea. Swan Levitt going around and doing a bit of farming supply, but you can see there's the ladder, there's the construction dig. Maybe we'll pump up a. No, we're, we're already there. We're ready to go. We don't need to change the priorities whatsoever. We've got a long way to run, though. The problem with some of these more industrial areas on my asteroids is the fact that they, they are so far away. So, so far away. I think we're also going to want to... I pressed F. I don't know what F brings up, but there we go. Turns out F and G very close to each other. All right, and Swan Levitt's off again. I mean, it'd be nice to just kind of follow her around, see what's going on. We've got construction supply. Also got to store some cooked seafood. Uh, maybe we could bring that priority down a little bit at some point, though. It's nice when people are going around and doing the storing that is that is something that needs to happen okay let's let's not waste time uh, not reversing pie actually and what are we doing there has has there been no 50, 58 seconds i'm just going to full speed my way through this while swan levitt goes around and does all of the deliveries that she was doing we've got about 30 seconds at whatever speed acceleration this happens to be whilst i'm looking at the details of the volcano the game does run a little bit slower it's the same with the duplicates as well when you select them there's a whole bunch of pathfinding and stuff that the game likes to visualize for you uh, and it likes to uh, to slow down the game just a little bit okay here we go this is immediately being turned into cold igneous rock but I think this should be fine. Yeah, there we go. We are... I don't know whether this is going to melt the igneous rock. Let's have a look. Is the temperature climbing? That's that's a question I would like to know. Melting point temperature. Okay, this, this could be better. This could be a lot better. I feel like we're losing a lot of magma. But the temperature should indeed be flowing its way through here. It's, it's all just red. You know, even though we've got 600 degrees versus 300 degrees, they're both the same shade of red. That's, that's not the most useful we've ever had. Okay, the igneous rock is not gaining mass. That's the main thing that I was actually a little bit worried about there. Uh, if the igneous rock was gaining mass, it would mean that all of the mag magma that we are pouring down on top of it would also be turning into igneous rock. Look how much we're actually getting out of the volcano this time. This is great. I'm a little bit worried about how fast it's going to cool down. 1500 degrees. That's fine. That's fine. How, how are we doing over here? We're trying to get this uh, crude oil up to a temperature temperature of about 400 degrees. If I select the crude oil and open up its uh, wiki page here, database if you will, we've got to get it up to, yeah, four, I'm going to call it 403 degrees because there is a three degree buffer of state change. Could you imagine if uh, they, they just went exactly for this number? You know, you, you, you tick up and then like the, 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 the process of ticking up would, would bring it somewhere else and then would cool down and turn into something different. Yeah, it would be a, a horrible system, especially for ice and stuff like that. 13 days until the next volcano erupts again. Uh, Again, the temperature dropping fast, dropping fast. We do have a fair amount of magma to keep the temperature together, but it's just, it's not affecting the side over here like I would like it to. The temperature is definitely on its way up. We're now at 230 when we were at 225 earlier. So, you know, it's, it's definitely going up. It's just, there's... There's a lot of crude oil here, and there's only this much magma. I was kind of expecting my volcano to pump out a little bit more. I should probably have run the numbers on the Oni calculator. If you'd literally just type Oni calculator into Google, it will take you to this wonderful website where you can work out all sorts of things like the heat transference or how much food you need, how many hatches you need for a certain amount of food. Why is there a Dreklet in here? How did you how did you get in here? Oh well, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> Talking of bad times, over to Blagolia. Let's have a look and see what Swan Leather is doing here. Digging, that's good. Does that mean that we are in? We're not in there yet, but we're getting very close. Who is supposed to be delivering? Oh, you're going that way instead. Do we not have... Aha, I see the problem here. Let's just go P9 like that and see Swan Levitt will uh, shortcut this action. I keep trying to click Swan Leather, and all she's doing is running around. Oh, cook supply. What, do we, ha do we have some meat down here? This is a problem. This is actually a problem. Okay, Faraday has come in to do some work instead. I, I suppose that's fine. Found himself some slime and is taking that up to our mushroom supply. The mushrooms are kind of the more steady food source that we've got, though we do also have a bunch of fish down here. The lack of power causing us problems, hence why I want to get this built. But talking of steady food supply, I would like to take this moment right here to thank the people that make sure that my food supply is kept steady. That's right, my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you will see a list of names. A list of names of the guys and girls that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation to make sure me and my channel can continue on into the future unimpeded by such things like starvation. 
So I truly, at this very moment right here, from the very bottom of my heart, I'd like to say thank you so, so very much. Okay, as we've got enough action off the, uh, enough space off the side here, yeah, action, why not? Let's put in a little bit of uh, gas venting action. There we go, gas pump. Uh, I want to get a steel one into there like so. All right, that's beautiful. And then we can literally just gas pipe this out of here. I'm not sure how hot it's going to be on the way out, but I think we can just send it across like this. And then do I want to gas bridge it on? I, um generally want to gas bridge on in case there are problems this 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 enables the uh, one of them to take priority over the other uh, i need to press an f2 and figure out how we're going to power this little gas pump here though it is producing a power device uh, power source itself though so that should be fine maybe if we come across here put down some standard tiles and then go hey could we have let's have a look here we want to have a normal power transformer right there i'm going to throw down a battery next to it as well as soon as the auto save finishes getting longer as the game goes on would you believe uh, and then we want a whole bunch of conductive wire which i'm just going to slam into place like this all right this should be fine I mean, you know what i feel like we don't even need to have these on such high priorities anymore we're just going to put these down to five swan levitt can get round to those as and when she wants to but these 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 builds this these are the ones these are the ones we need to have also i need to put this on construction not all because well you, you end up uh, messing with some weird stuff if you just go all priorities all the time Okay, as, as is the way quite often, I've had to go along and put down some super high priorities here. Whilst that's happening, let's have a look and see what our temperature. We've managed to clear out all of the uh, the, the magma already. That's a bit of a shame, and it's quite cool. It's less than 400 degrees here, so I don't think it's because of that. Uh, 279, That's this, this is going to take forever, like literally forever. <laughs> You know, I'm not sure how power got into this battery. If we have a look at this big power line here, there's no producers over this side. The only producer is these natural gas geysers, the polluted oxygen, and over here we've just got consumers. I I don't know how power got into this battery. I see no way look, it's happening again. Where is it even coming from? But that that's fine. I, I guess we can just accept that we are receiving power out of nowhere. And we'll we'll just not look a gift horse in the mouth. I, f I feel like this this should be something that we can harness and uh, make make ourselves a, a serious amount of power here somehow. Anyway, we've got ourselves mixed gases running through the system. That is disgusting. That's not what we want. One of the big problems is the fact that we don't have this polluted ox uh, polluted water being covered up. We can work on that. That's no problem. That's the next thing that's going to happen. But I also have us a little filter over here, which uh, also needs power. Why doesn't this have power? It's connected to the same system this is i don't i don't understand <laughs> okay let's throw some power in there through super manual means that's fine the whole time this is pumping out this is you know what i shouldn't have put this gas bridge in place i forgot that we're going to be pumping out polluted oxygen here can we fix that incredibly quickly i think we can if i take this gas bridge and deconstruct it at a high priority and then pop these across also at super high priorities that wasn't the right priority overlay uh nine there we go brilliant hopefully someone will be coming along to fix this i mean if i now turn this down to a regular priority swan levitt should actually be coming along to fix this hopefully that's a little bit of a break going into place there that's good also swan levitt absolutely losing her mind at the moment because we've been asking her to do just too many jobs oh, she, she's off she's gonna go dig I, that's fine that's fine I, I would like that to be emptied out to be fair Okay, with the power of alarm, we've got Faraday into this system now. Why are we dropping natural gas out of this side? Ah, I, I noticed I did this during my editing last time. We've, it's not hydrogen, it's natural gas. I can't believe I did that. I, I, and like, I said it out loud. I said hydrogen out loud when I wanted natural gas. It was great shame, brought great shame to myself. But not what is not bringing great shame to myself is the fact that this is now producing some power. Some power. It looks like it might be producing something like 3,000 watts. That's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. Is it going to be enough to self-power the system, though? That's the real question. Is it going to be enough to get people over here to uh, knock down these at some point? That's the next question. But it does indeed look like we've got some power flowing. Is it going to be enough? I, I'm just going to go with yes. 
I guess we'll find out in a couple of cycles time whether it's doing the real job or not. Natural gas geyser is idle. When when does it go dormant? That's the real question. We really need to get some sort of research duplicate over here to deal with all these little problems. So given the fact that these batteries on the main spline have just filled up, that means all the little side batteries also must be full. Yes, indeed. So yes, we are creating enough power to be sustainable. Wonderful. Look at look at the backfill of gas here. We're even filling up our gas reservoir. Oh, that's that's great. That's amazing. So the only thing left to do now is to to try and get Swan Levitt to not be quite so stressed. Sopping wet, low morale. The center of attention is quite good, but uh, most things that we see here are just making her more and more stressed. We want to try and avoid that if we can. Going down at this point, that's nice. And back up her, her morale on a knife edge. It's, it seems to be something that we've got with these builders. I, uh, I, I give them a whole bunch of abilities to build, and then they're like, nah, this is a stressful job, could I not? Oh, and now this this natural gas geyser has come back online. Oh, we are we are going to be overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the amount of gas we're going to be uh, producing here. That that's that's cool though. That's cool. We have storage. Okay, now Swan Levitt has still got her stress way up at about 60, and I feel like we can drop that. At the moment, the stress meter, if you will, is kind of swinging a little bit either way, depending whether I'm watching her or not, and whether there is low oxygen or not. Now, I feel like we can change this, and the best way we can change this is by keeping an eye on Swan Levitt. Where is she getting sopping wet? Where, where are these things happening? Now, we got this uh, wonderful parving system that I suppose we could follow through, but I I think we're just going to check out the, the full system here. Oh, well, there, there's a few problems straight away. Let's grab some ladders and let's pop them down there. I'm going to uh, get my construction priorities up pretty high. Uh, and I also would like to no, hit the wrong button. I would, of course, I would like to hit the wrong button. I do it all the time. Uh, I'd also like to get these mopped up. Where, where are you going, Swan Lever? You're going to get some construction supply. All right, well, good luck with that. Hopefully, other people are going to be along like Goddard over here. Do a little bit of mopping. I wonder if the fact that they kind of get their little tootsies a little bit wet coming through here. Let's have a look at Faraday. Let's see if anything has happened. Uh, stress, cold air. No, the, uh, the, f the there's more sopping wet. The, oh, of course there is. Look at this. Okay, will this small reduction in moist living areas help? I, I sure do hope so. Uh, we're still, I mean, we're losing, losing 25 per cycle, but as soon as we get that sopping wet, um, debuff again there then we're, we're gonna have problems uh it's literally straight away look at this look at this okay this place is horrific it must be from all of the uh melting polluted ice at the top not the hardest fix i've had to implement just throw down a few mop orders that should take care of that everybody else is also running through this sort of stuff over here we could do with some more ladders i wonder if i build a ladders up and over whether they will go over the top or whether they'll consider dropping down to be a shorter route that's kind of awkward to be honest that that's something that we're gonna have to figure out but unfortunately we won't know until we uh, can set a few more uh, build orders up to go just like that and then the mop is uh, is being done and as well kind of a shame that they're just kind of standing in the water it's also very hot that's that's uh, giving other problems we're about to see it be very hot as well I'm not sure whether I want to let the duplicates just kind of stand there for that I think I think everybody should be okay yeah what what could possibly go wrong turning a bunch of this polluted water into steam and then slowly cooking swan leather. Oh, Goddard's even stood in the water itself. This water, only about 40 degrees. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, everyone's running away just the gold. I mean, how, lo how long until the gold grows? Town time has been called, and that is the exact moment the volcano decides to erupt. We are getting a little bit of steam being formed here, uh, but mostly we're just making sand and, and stuff like that. That's great. Of course, the uh, polluted water being turned to steam, the polluted dirt that is being left behind is getting cooked by the gold and making us a steady supply of sand. Probably not the best form of heat deletion. Oh man, look at that. We've got to... This is where all the water spills are coming from. I wonder if I could set a door up? I don't know, there's not much space here. 
Okay, Swan Levitt's stress has definitely balanced out a little bit here. Hopefully things are going to be going better today. Let's see if we're going to get any stress just from walking across. We've got soggy feet and cold air, but still doing well enough with that high morale. Okay, let, let's see how the rest of the day goes. Well, all in all, while I was watching Swan Levitt run around, I've got to say that I've noticed this place is not the nicest to live in. And whether it's being choked by carbon dioxide down below and frozen, no less, or being boiled up top, I I don't know. I found I've definitely made better places to live, like reversing or Piaxin, but but the glow. Uh, but Swan Levitt's stress is indeed going down. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Today we managed to get two natural gas geysers actually producing more power than we can consume right now. But next time, I will definitely be going around trying to uh, tidy up the carbon dioxide down here. I don't know where it's all going. We just seem to be collecting it in little, little puddles down below. I suppose that's mostly fine, but we could do better. And maybe try and figure out a way of just evening out some of these temperature gradients over here but i will see you then or when we're gonna do that bye